Hello everybody, my name is Steve and at the age of 41, I was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation which came as a complete shock to me. Despite living a healthy lifestyle, AFib struck me unexpectedly and had a significant impact on my life. If you've been following this channel, then you know I had an ablation to treat AFib in 2021. In this video, I'll be discussing what my life is like two years after my ablation. I'll discuss my health status and if I'm having any AFib symptoms, what exercises I can do and what foods I can and can't eat, how I monitor my heart and what I'm doing to prevent AFib from coming back. Here are some details about my life after ablation. Monitoring my heart is part of my daily routine. I check my pulse frequently and pay close attention to any sensations in my chest that may indicate that AFib has returned. This habit of obsessing about my heartbeat began when I was having regular AFib episodes and has since become a permanent part of my life. Additionally, my doctor advised I wear an EKG watch, which I do, and that I run the EKG function at least once daily. Staying attuned to my heart has become a regular part of my daily routine. Prior to my AFib diagnosis, I had a passion for weightlifting and exercised almost daily. Often participating in rigorous exercises such as trail running, mountain biking, and CrossFit without any hesitation. However, following my ablation procedure, I've been more cautious about engaging in these high intensity activities. While my doctor has given me the green light to exercise as I please, I still feel hesitant about pushing my limits. Currently, my exercise routine primarily consists of low impact activities such as walking, hiking, biking, and bodyweight exercises. Although I'm optimistic that I may regain the confidence someday to participate in these more extreme type exercises in the future, only time will tell if I end up doing that again. Recently, I consulted with a dietitian to ensure my eating habits were as healthy as possible. Despite the absence of a miracle food for people with AFib, the dietitian emphasized the need to eat a diverse array of nutritious foods, such as fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. In terms of beverages, I have made the decision to completely eliminate alcohol from my life. This is based on the advice from my doctor who cautioned against consuming alcohol for people with AFib. Furthermore, I consciously limit my caffeine intake and usually opt for decaf with just a splash of regular coffee mixed in. Developing atrial fibrillation shook my confidence. Prior to my diagnosis, I felt capable of handling any situation that came my way and considered myself a strong and resourceful individual. However, AFib left me feeling nervous, tense, and prone to extreme mood swings. Although after my ablation, my mood has somewhat stabilized, I have not regained my former confidence and I'm uncertain if I ever will. But on a positive note, my wife frequently comments how much more positive I've been since the ablation. I'm much happier and relaxed than when I was struggling with AFib symptoms. I've even started joking around again and my overall mood has improved. Since being diagnosed with AFib and having an ablation, I've gained a newfound appreciation for the value of living a healthy and fulfilled life. I've set personal goals aimed at promoting physical wellness and creating lasting memories with my loved ones. I've learned to let go of minor stressors and focus instead on meaningful experiences that bring joy to my life. One significant change to my perspective that came after the ablation is that I'm no longer afraid of the procedure. Prior to my ablation, I was terrified and vowed to avoid it at all costs, even if that meant relying on prescription drugs for the rest of my life. However, my mindset has now shifted. I sincerely hope I never have to deal with AFib again and it doesn't come back. But if it does, and my doctor recommends another ablation as treatment, I will do it without hesitation. Have I experienced AFib since the ablation? The most profound change I've experienced since having an ablation is the absence of AFib symptoms. As I've just passed the two year anniversary of my ablation procedure, I'm proud to report that I haven't experienced even a single episode of AFib. Although the effects of my previous struggles with AFib still linger, I really do feel like I have my life back and I'm looking forward to the future again. This is what I'm doing to prevent AFib from coming back. I asked my doctor, what can I do to prevent my AFib from coming back? And this is the list he gave me. Maintain a healthy weight was the number one thing he said to do. The way I maintain my healthy weight is by eating a heart healthy, well-balanced diet and staying active. Avoid alcohol and cigarettes. So I've never been a big drinker. I drink in moderation socially, but I've completely quit drinking and I've never smoked. Incorporate regular exercise into your day. My doctor suggested I just do whatever exercises make me happy. So for me, I try and go on at least a two mile walk every day. And on other days, I do body weight exercises and ride my bike. Maintain a healthy blood pressure. For me, I regularly check my blood pressure and I see my primary care doctor who monitors my blood pressure as well. I'm committed to keeping it in a healthy range, but for some reason in the future, if it gets out of that range and my doctor prescribes medications, I'm willing to take them to keep my blood pressure where it needs to be. Practicing mindfulness is something I'd really like to incorporate more of in my life. Rather it be doing yoga or deep breathing or meditation, 
I think these are really important and when I've done them in the past, they've made me feel really good. So I'm definitely working on incorporating these into part of my daily routine to help me manage stress, feel more calm, and just be a happier person. I'm introducing a new segment where I answer some of the most common questions people ask me in the comments. Number one, what is the best and worst part about creating YouTube videos about atrial fibrillation? The best part is hearing from people around the world who have found my experiences helpful and reassuring. Knowing that I've helped someone feel less anxious about their own situation is incredibly rewarding. However, the worst part is receiving medical questions that I'm not qualified to answer. I feel for those suffering from AFib and their desire for answers, but it's important for them to direct their medical questions to their treating doctor for the best advice based on their individual situation. I feel bad having to tell people this, but it's really important. Ask your doctor. Question two, am I currently taking any AFib medications? And the answer is no. Based on my situation, I am able to manage AFib without taking any medications. And question number three, which we mentioned earlier in this video, but I will reiterate my answer is, would you have another ablation? And the answer is yes. The procedure was much easier on me than I expected. It was successful as I haven't experienced AFib since, but if AFib did come back and my doctor suggested I do another ablation, I would do it again. Thank you so much for watching. 97% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Subscribing is absolutely free and it really helps my channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Also, if you're not sure what to watch next, check out this video right here that YouTube thinks you will really enjoy. I really appreciate you all watching. Take care and I will see you next time.